Hello and welcome to part two of our curved TV wall mini series, where we will focus on modeling the back wall for our TV wall and then move on to the fronts of the sideboard and the tower and finish off by modeling the coffee table and maybe adding some details like baseboards and a door to the room. If you haven't seen part one yet, I'm going to put a link down to the description or it'll be up here somewhere. So let's jump into it. This is where we left off. And now that I look at it the next day, um, I noticed that I want to do one more change. That is the box in the middle here, which to me feels a little squished together. So I want to have it a little wider. I'm going to go into front view, uh, vertex select and x-ray. And I'm just going to take all of these vertices and GX 100 minus, just to bring them over a little bit. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Cool. Now let's do our back wall. And we're going to do that by selecting our tower and going to vertex select. And the first thing I'm going to do, I have to do this anyway for the fronts later on. But the first thing I'm going to do is add a loop cut right down the center of this shelf here. So I'm going to hit Control R and right click to cancel out the movement. So now I'm going to select this vertex back here and control select the one up here. And that gives me this whole row. And I'm going to hit shift D to duplicate it, right click to cancel, P to separate the selection, like we've done a couple times now. Go back into object mode and take this newly created tower.001. I'm going to move it into the main TV wall collection and I'm going to rename it back wall. And then what I want to do is add a mirror modifier. So generate mirror. And I'm going to reuse the mirror object that we already have here, our mirror. And I'm going to turn on clipping. And you can already see that it's mirrored it over here. So I'm going to go into vertex select, A to select everything, E to extrude along the X axis. And I'm just going to bring this all over. And I'm going to Let's go into face select, select all of it, E to extrude 19. Now it's extruded it the wrong way. So I'm just going to go in object mode G, Y, 19 minus to bring this all forward. And back in face select, I'm going to hit A to select everything, shift N to recalculate all our normals. And that way, we have our nice back wall. And what I want to add now is I'm going to go back into face select and I'm going to take these two faces, E to extrude 30. And then I'm going to put one more loop cut vertically in here, bring it all the way over and then GX 25. And lastly, I'm going to select the face down here Alt E to extract, uh, extrude manifold, extract, and bring it back 29 millimeters, just so there's no Z fighting and nothing. Yeah, and that will be a nice little channel where we can fish cables underneath and behind. Let's give it a little bit of a radius. So select this edge, control B, and I'm going to give this 10 segments by scrolling up with the mouse wheel and then I'm just gonna give it a nice little little fillet just to make it look nice. So we're gonna right click and shade smooth and that looks very good. All right let's move on to the front. Select the sideboard, that's where we're gonna start. Go into edge select and first thing we're gonna do is we're going to add another loop cut right down the center of this shelf. Right there. And then we're going to trace around our shape here. I'm going to start up here and control select to get the shortest path. And just trace around the main shape. I'm going to shift select the front of our newly created edge loop. I'm going to shift D and P to separate the selection. Back in object mode, now I have sideboard.001. 
And I'm going to create a new collection here called front SB. And I'm going to move our new object right in there. Now, if I tap into vertex select with our new object selected, I see that there's a couple of vertices that aren't necessary anymore. So we're just going to select all these ones that we won't need anymore. That one too. And we're going to control X to dissolve them. Now we're going to work with n-gons here, but because we're not deforming any of the surfaces, that's completely fine. We're also not going to introduce a subdivision surface modifier and nothing of that sort. So we're totally fine with n-gons, which means we can also get rid of some of these vertices just to reduce the count a little. So everything that is on a straight line, we're going to control X and dissolve. I'm not going to do anything about the curvature because I don't want to have any changes to the curvature. So I'm just going to leave those alone. Now I'm going to move things around a little. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to select everything with A. I'm going to hit F to fill. I'm going to make sure clipping is not turned on right now on the mirror modifier. And with both faces selected, I'm going to hit I to inset and I'm going to hit two. Now I have it inset two millimeters. I'm going to hit control I to invert the selection and X to delete the faces. Now here on this center piece, we now have a four millimeter gap. So I'm going to select all these vertices and go GX one to bring them one millimeter over. And on this edge here, I'm going to select this whole edge Control B to bevel. I'm going to scroll down so I only have two segments. And I'm going to hit one for one millimeter segment. That gives a total of two millimeters. And I'm going to hit X to delete that face. That looks a lot more like. Let's do that again. That looks a lot better. X faces. Now we have a two millimeter reveal on all the fronts, which means now we can separate them from each other. So I'm going to select the top face, hit P to separate the selection. And then go back into object mode. I'm going to select the top one and call it drawers, sideboard, upper and rename the bottom one too. Now I'm going to go into edit mode one more time, face select with both selected. I'm going to E to extrude 19 millimeters. And that's it. We have our fronts on the sideboard. That is all we need. And we have a two millimeter reveal everywhere. So now we can move on to the tower, which is going to be a little more complex. So let's select our tower. Tab into edit mode. And we already have our loop cut down here, but we're going to add one on these two shelves too. So control R there and control R there. Now we can start tracing around just with it with the sideboard. So I'm going to hit alt control uh, alt click and then shift alt to trace around. And then I'm going to grab these center edge loops too. Hit Shift D, P to separate the selection and back into object mode. Organize this too. And now I'm going to take this one and turn it into the front. So we want to have two big drawers on the bottom following the lines of the sideboard and then two fronts on each compartment here. So let's go into vertex select. And first, like we did before, clean up our newly created mesh. Oh, not too much. Control X to dissolve these vertices. And now I'm going to need one more edge loop, basically on this edge here, but I don't have a face. So I'm going to go into front select and I can do 
control R on this line and add another vertex right in the middle of these. I'm going to measure it over and go do the same thing over there. And then I'm going to take these two vertices and F to fill. Now I can go into wireframe mode and GG them into place. So they line up with the edge loop on the sideboard, just like that. And now the last thing I need is an edge loop right down the center that follows the curvature, but I can't do an edge loop here. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to take all these vertices and we're going to GX 400 minus, because remember the tower was 800 millimeters wide. So we just bring that all back to exactly the center of it. And I'm also going to take all these and GX1, bring them over already. And now all I need to do is have another copy of these over here. So I'm going to take the whole bottom area here, just where the drawers are going to be. I'm going to hit Shift D and give it 399. That way I already have my one millimeter on the other side too. Now I'm just going to connect the lines I actually need, which is the one on top, select both and F to fill. Take these ones, F to fill and select the bottom ones, F to fill. And now I'm going to take the whole thing and go into local view. And I'm just going to select the individual faces and or the individual areas and F to fill them with a face. And then I'm going to take all these faces and shift N to recalculate the normals. And then one more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edge mode. I'm going to select this topmost edge, control select this one here, and I'm going to control X to dissolve that edge because I have one long front each. So now I can deselect everything and F to fill and that will give me individual faces. Now we're going to stay in, in face select and with all these selected, hit I to inset and I again. So we actually inset the individual faces. One for one millimeters, enter. And then again, like we did on the sideboard, control I to invert the selection and then just X to delete the faces. So now we have our individual fronts and we're going to use an array modifier in a bit here to basically copy each of those doors over. So we only have to work on them once. So let's separate all of these. I go into face select and select each one P to separate selection. And now we have all these newly created object and I'm just going to rename them quickly to stay organized. So now I'm going to go in object mode through each and every one and set the origin back to their individual geometry because right now from where we copied it the the origin of each of these is still where the origin of the tower is actually okay now what we don't need anymore are those drawer fronts after we extruded them so let's sec select all of them one more time in face mode hit a to select everything E19. And there we have our fronts. Now let's double check the width of these by selecting one edge and activating edge length. And we have 397. So we want to array them over with an array modifier. So generate array. And by default, it's using a relative offset, which goes by the origin and the bounding box of the mesh. 
which we don't want. We want to know exactly how far it goes because we have 397 millimeters and we want to have a two millimeter reveal. So we give this 399 on the X axis and that way we have our exact measurement. And now we can just select the next one, shift select the top, control C, copy selected modifier and choose the array. Although in this case, we could also just select the uh, copy the all the modifiers because the bevel is the same. It's not like we wouldn't delete a mirror modi modifier like we would have before. So select this one, shift select this, C, copy modifiers, works just the same. All right. Now on these doors, we want to have a 60 millimeter frame and then have a glass insert. So we got to inset faces and that's where uh, some of the issues will arise that can happen when working with curved surfaces. So let's take all our doors and go into local view and front and go into x-ray and face select. Now we're going to select all these big faces and hit I to inset and 60. And now you can see the problem. So it goes along, it insets along the, uh, the vertex normals. So you basically go on a straight line from this corner, which messes up the mesh completely. So we got to fix all this. It's a little tedious and a little time consuming, but that's just the way it is. So I'm going to show you on one and I'm going to speed up so you don't have to sit through me fixing all this for five, 10 minutes. All right. So let's make sure our edge snapping is active and we want to be in front selection and vertex mode and we're going to start in the corners and we want to begin with the one that comes out from the very corner and we want to snap it to the curvature so we're going to box select these to make sure we get both sides and then we're going to constrain it to the x-axis so we don't mess up anything. So GX and then we're going to hover over this edge and hold control and it'll snap it to it. So when that is done, then we can make a little bit of room here by edge sliding these along the curvature. Always make sure you box select so you get the other side too. GG and then we'll bring it down. Sometimes it's, it hangs a little there on that vertex and wants to go the other way. So you have to fiddle around a little, but eventually you get it there. And we'll clean all that up in a second here. So let's move on to the next one. Start with this one, because that's the one that comes from the corner. GX, snap it to that line. And then we're going to make a little room again. Box selecting all these and edge sliding by hitting GG. And then move on to the next corner. Start with this one again, coming from the corner. GX, snap it to the line. Make a little bit of room. And lastly, in this corner, GX, snap it to that line. Room. All right, there we go. And now we have clean geometry. But now you'll notice that this is a little bit of a mess. Technically, it's not an issue here. Uh, if you have a little modeless OCD, you want to fix that. So all these vertices have an equal distance and we can easily do it with the loop tools add-on. So we're going to select this one that one I like to do not in x-ray so I don't accidentally get grab one from the back because we have to do that on each individual row of vertices. So we'll select this one and then control select the one up top, right click, loop tools and space. And that will interpolate the, the distance between the di individual vertices so it's equally distributed without changing any of the curvature. And then I'm going to do this all the way around. 
control, select, right click, loop tools, space. Same here, no, not shift select, control select. And yet I still grab the one in the back. And do the same thing on the back side. Let's go in the back view. Again, this step technically is not necessary. I just like to have everything neat and tidy. And now if we go into, back into X-ray, it just looks so nice. So now I'm going to do this with the other two fronts and I'm going to speed right through it. Uh, I hope you get the gist on how this works. If not, maybe rewind a little, but I'm just going to speed right through it. So see you in a second here. Okay. With that done, now we can start insetting our faces or extruding our faces, excuse me. So we're going to select all these fronts, go into face select, and then take our big ones in the middle. And we want to have a four millimeter glass. So we're going to go eight millimeters in on the front. So extrude eight millimeters negative. And on the back side, seven millimeters. E seven minus. Okay, now the last thing we got to do, because now the, the bevel modifier gets applied to everything, to every sharp edge. So when we insert a glass here, we do not have a bevel here. If anything, we would have an inverted bevel, but we can live with a sharp edge there. So we do that by changing our bevel modifier. So with everything selected, I'm going to hold Alt and I'm going to change the limit method from angle to weight. And right now you can see that the bevel modifier has disappeared everywhere. And that is because we haven't assigned any weight to any of the edges yet. So in edge select, we're going to select, select sharp edges. And again, with Alt held down, I'm going to change the bevel weight to one and it doesn't do it so we have to do it individual okay. the sharp edges are selected bring them all to one do it in this one bring them all to one now but right now we're back to where we started so we're gonna reselect all of them and go face select and just select our big faces here and its edge data will bring the mean bevel weight back to zero. And that way, again, we have to do that individually. I apologize for the confusion. That was a little, little weird. So it has to be done individually, but then we have basically eliminated the bevel on this edge where we will have our glass insert. And with that, we have our glass front. Okay, go out of local view and see what it looks like. It just looks nice. And we have them all organized here. So we can minimize those collections for the time being. And now we can start modeling our coffee table. So let's make a new collection here and call it coffee table. Coffee table. So I'm gonna do this with a cylinder. Bring this up one. No, not in there. I'm gonna bring it up one. So we're gonna shift A at a mesh cylinder. Where is it? There. And 32 vertices is way too few. So we're going to quintuple that. We can just do times five just to make it a lot more smooth. So as a radius, we want to have 650. 
and a depth of 400. So let's go into face snapping. And no. Hmm. When did I activate proportional editing? Didn't mean to do that. Okay. Uh, let's just bring it over here for now. We can position it later. So I'm going to go into top view. I'm going to do this in wireframe and vertex select. And I'm just going to select the top half. And I know where half is because of the origin here. And I want to stay above that. I'm just going to X delete those vertices. And I'm going to add a mirror modifier on the Y axis. I'm going to leave clipping on. Now I want to flatten out one side of them and it really is it's completely up to you where you want to flatten it. I'm just going to eyeball it uh, roughly around there. So with these selected, I'm going to hit, hit S, Y, 0. And I should have stayed in vertex snapping. And I can G, Y and hover over this vertex to bring it right there. So this is the basic shape of our coffee table and now I can just select the top ones F to fill the bottom ones F to fill and I'm gonna go into side view face select and select all these faces and then I'm gonna hit shift D to make a duplicate but I'm not gonna separate it this time I'm gonna leave it where it is Instead, what I'm going to do is hit Control I and then H to hide those. And back into, let's go into side view, vertex select, hit all the bottom ones and GZ75. I'm also going to take the top row and H to hide them. So I'm just looking at the bottom for now. Now, I'm going to box select the very middle ones on the side here and I want to bring them down with a nice little curvature toward the outside. So now I want to have proportional editing active and I want to change the fall off from smooth to sphere. Now if I hit GZ, I'm going to move everything. So I got to scroll my mouse wheel till I see this circle come up and I want to have it so it just catches everything towards the, the corner and I'm going to bring it down 50 millimeters. Then I switch over to front view. Maybe I go into local view for the time being. It makes it a little more visible. And again, I'm going to take the center one, GZ, now I'm going to adjust that circle and I'm going to bring this up by 50. And we're going to deal with this in a little bit here. Actually, we can just do it right now. And GZ, I'm going to turn proportional editing off for that though. Let's grab these GZ and just equalize that a little. So it's a little bit of a nicer fall off. We're going to add a bevel here in a minute, so it won't be that bad. All right, so let's bring back basically everything. So we're going to select, uh, let's get this out of the way again. Control L to select the linked and hide that again. So we're going to select everything. I'm going to Alt E extrude faces along normals by 25. And now we can deal with this corner here a little better. So let's grab these and shift select these, bring them down a little, and then one over. We'll do the same thing. 
make the fall off a little smoother there. That already looks pretty decent. Not sure why this edge is out though. So let's just go into top view. Vertex select. Go into X-ray. Might have to do a little cleanup here. Is that the bottom one? Yes. So G exclude the Z-axis, snap it to that vertex. And then we're just going to bring this GG, hold Alt so we can go past the original one and just line it up like this. We can already also go GY and snap it to there. We just got to do the same thing over here. G exclude the X axis here. GG, bring it somewhere here. GY to there. So now we're going to bring up back everything, go into edge select, x-ray mode, and we're going to select all of these edges, shift select all of these, control B to bevel, and give it about four segments, just to make that corner a little, a little smoother. Right click to shade smooth. And then we're going to add a bevel modifier. Two millimeters, four segments. We're going to harden the normals. That already looks pretty neat. Now I just want to make a little groove here. So we have a bit of a combination of rounded shapes and square or sharp shapes and edges. So I'm just going to make one groove here. So I'm going to go back into edge select and I'm going to hit control L. That was only supposed to control L to just select the outside. Control I to invert the selection and hide that one more time. And I'm going to make a loop cut, bring that down. 25 millimeters and I got to do the same thing on the inside. Control R, GZ 25 minus. Now I'm going to go into edge select. I'm going to take the first one from our fillet. One, two, three over. And I'm going to go around. And that won't work. So let's go one further. And the same thing here. One, two, three. I'm gonna control B, scroll down so it's only two segments. Two. To have a four millimeter gap in total. And then Alt E to extrude the faces along the normals and just bring them in a smidge. And that way it just loosens up the design a little. And we have a nice combination of rounded shapes and sharp edges. That looks good. Okay, let's go out of local view and just position this somewhere around there. Around there. All right, make a quick save. And last thing I want to do is add a baseboard along here and along there, because by the time we set up the camera, it's just going to look at this, this angle here. So we don't need to go anywhere further. So let's go back, bring back the wall left. And I'm going to bring in a cube into the room collection. So whenever you, these have a, a little bit of a a gray shadow around that means that's the active collection so shift a mesh cube i'm going to make this 160 millimeters high 19 mil on the y and x doesn't matter i can just leave that there g y snap it there 
Actually, you can just snap it there in general. Um, in this case, if it crosses behind there, it doesn't really matter to me right now because it's not going to be visible. If I were to build this, I would cut along here anyway. So let's just leave it behind there. It's okay. It's going to top view, vertex, and x ray. Let's take this group and control shift. Alt S to shear and hit one. Now we can bring this over a little so it actually snaps to the wall. GX19. And then we can just extrude that along the Y till it's somewhere around the windows there. What it looks like here, again, I don't care. And then we're just gonna take these one, extrude, Actually, no, we have, don't have to extrude them. We can GX, bring them over here. Apply the scale. And just so the light reflections work a little better, we're going to smack a, a bevel modifier on there, our usual one. All right. So last thing I want to do for this part is bring a door in. So I'm going to... Put my cursor over here and I'm going to use a Blender, blender built-in add-on called Archimesh. So I can go under Create Archimesh. If you don't have it active yet, just go under Edit Preferences, Add-ons and look for Archimesh. And then we can just add a door and I'm going to leave it pretty standard. I'm going to leave all the values. I'm going to make this a little thinner though. Uh, if I bring my menu out of here, frame thickness, it always is a very little, a little very thick. I'm just going to bring this. It comes with a group, with a group to move, move everything, GY, move this over a little. And it also comes with Boolean objects, so it's automatically, we should actually automatically cut everything out if you need it in this case it doesn't seem to do it to the baseboard so let's see where we want it um i think the placement is actually pretty good let's bring it over just a hair and that should be good and then we can just take this boolean object here shift select the baseboard Control minus. That is if you have bool tools enabled. Again, preferences. And then bool tool. It's just a bunch of shortcuts for booleans. It's very handy. And the problem with these Archimesh objects is they never have a bevel or anything on them. So let's just put one on there. And in those cases, we have to deactivate clamp overlap because the geometry is not always that clean on these. But it's free, it's fast, and it's handy to have. And in a case like this, it's perfectly fine to use these. Let's do the same thing with the door. Shift select the frame, control C, copy modifiers. And it already comes with basic materials. There's a diffuse BSDF on them. Where you can change the color. Um, there is a black handle material on on the handle. So if you need a door or a window quickly and it's not the focus object, those are perfectly fine. All right. So that basically concludes the modeling process of our little project here. So we're gonna hold off here and stop the, the tutorial for this part. And then in the next part, we're gonna look at UV unwrapping, texturing it with some nice dark wood and earthy tones, and put some decorations in to get the get some life in the in the scene and set up the lighting and the render, and then we're good to go. So I'll see you in part three. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.